Good afternoon. I guess I'm the only thing that stands between you and lunch. So I'm going to try and get through this as quickly as possible. Um, my topic today is uh, can cinema cause social change? I genuinely believe it can. While it might not affect sweeping social changes, it has the power to tell stories and thereby plant images in your head. Storytelling is something that's existed since time immemorial. And you know that stories have been an extremely potent way of delivering thoughts and ideas. History is peppered with examples. You have the Bible, the Gita, Quran, Ramayana. These were all great stories. I mean, imagine if Krishna stood on a podium like this and told Arjuna what dharma was. I think Arjuna would have fallen asleep. Take it on to the battle of Kurukshetra. You have a blood-strewn battlefield. You have brothers fighting each other. You have Arjuna, a truly cinematic moment. Puts an arrow into his bow, is about to unleash it, overcome by anguish, and boom, we have the concept of dharma. So stories have continuously done this. They've used imagery to get ideas across. The difference between cinema and most of the earlier forms of storytelling is very simple. Early forms were a two-step process. So when someone told a story to another person, which was the earliest form, a verbal form, the listener had to listen and then form an image in, in his or her head. We move to books. I see Ravi there. That's what he does for a living. He puts words on a page. Reader reads it, forms an image. Drama took it one step further, tried to eliminate some of those things, but still the person had to visualize the place. And finally came movies. Today as we know it, Barnan is the most potent form of storytelling because it works with the way our brain is wired. We like images, we think in images, get off the ground. But Dor again tried to do the thing of breaking the Bollywood portrayal of strong women, which is to portray them as these shrill, screaming vixens standing and screaming at, you know, the injustice uh, perpetrated by society. And uh, it's ironic because they were reinforcing the same gender inequality that they were fighting against. And with Dor, again, it was a very humbling experience because of the offshoots that it had. And my most memorable one was the fact that uh, when the film screened at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., this <clears throat> teary-eyed woman walked up to me and said, that's the most beautiful lesbian love story that I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm serious. And I, I took that as a compliment. Again, never intended, but, you know, people read what they want uh, from a film. Finally, it bling, brings me to Lakshmi. With Lakshmi, I actually had a very specific agenda. No matter how many times I've said entertainment first, uh, story first, message later, with Lakshmi, I actually tried to approach it from the reverse. Uh, once again, the reason is deliberate to sort of jolt uh, the audiences from the comfort of their homes and actually take them to places where they haven't been. Um, about three and a half years ago, I uh, was invited by Plan India to talk at uh, some conference, which uh, I really didn't know much about. But uh, most of the times we're called. And uh, just before we go on stage, we're given a little briefing sheet. And for those 10 minutes, we pretend to be intelligent about the topic at hand. And uh, this was one such occasion. So I was doing my little bit. I went. and. Uh, uh, they were asking for some parliament to pass some bills, so I went, I did my little bit, and uh, when I left, I met this rather interesting gentleman, and we, st uh, we got talking, and he said that he ran a little rescue shelter uh, in a small town in Andhra Pradesh, and he said, if you have uh, some time, at some point, I'd love for you to come down and visit. And 
one thing that he told me, uh, an incident that actually changed his life, uh, sort of triggered my interest. He said he was a journalist, and uh, uh, when he was covering one such event where there was a raid, and they picked up a bunch of these sex workers and they were bringing them, he said the hate unleashed on them by the public was so strong uh, from the journalists, from the cops, and from the general public as they walked. He said he couldn't fathom how one human being could have that kind of hate for another without actually knowing what they did. So, you know, he just said this in broad strokes and he said, when you have the time, I'd love for you to visit. So, eventually, uh, out of curiosity more than anything else, I went down there. He runs a small rescue shelter uh, outside uh, Ongol in Andhra Pradesh. And uh, I went there and there were about 45 women and there were about 25 children uh, in that place. So I got talking with these women. And what happened over the next two days uh, was something that uh, pretty much changed my life. Uh, when you're in the comfort of your homes, I'm no different. And you sort of click images on the internet, you do a little, and then you move on to the next one. Or if you're socially conscious, then you say, okay, I'm going to forward this email to a bunch of other people. Nothing wrong with that. All these things are very essential. But when you actually stand across from someone who's gone through stuff that I cannot even begin to describe. Tale after tale of absolute inhumanity emerged. And I kept listening to them. And at one point, you sort of go, uh, grow numb with you know, the tales that you're hearing. And at the back of my mind, I kept saying, OK, I need to do something about this. Uh, uh, I need to shed the spotlight because this is a topic I care about. But uh, again, we filmmakers are very fickle. Uh, there's that momentary burst of, oh, we want to do something. Then you go back and uh, the next check is cut and you move on with your life. Uh, so this was no different. Except I met this amazing girl. And in a very quiet voice, uh, you know, she mumbled something. And I was like, I thought I didn't hear it correctly. So I asked the guy, I said, did I hear what she's saying? And he said, yeah. You have no idea how courageous this girl is. She was the first one in the state of Andhra Pradesh to take her traffickers to court. This is something that they had been struggling for years. They would rescue these girls, bring them to the shelter. After a few months of settling them, uh, trying to heal their wounds both psychologically, uh, mentally, physically, they would try to get these girls to go to court, uh, you know, to stand as witnesses. And none of them would have the courage because of all the social issues. They were threatened by the mafia and all this. And this girl, this un unassuming, quiet little girl who just stood there in a corner, had actually done it. And that was the first case in the state of Andhra Pradesh. And that set a precedent. And then by last count, there were 94 traffickers who had been jailed. And as, yeah, I mean, this is a story of heroism. And I said, OK, that's my hook. Like I keep saying, we've become so numb in today's times, especially to images. And I'm talking about the power of images to change our thought processes and sort of instill amazing ideas. But we've become so numb to images that I felt instead of just giving you all statistics, I would take you all down a road which you know few people travel. The ones who've seen Lakshmi, it's an extremely hard film to watch. Uh, and I'm going to address the women more than the men. Um, it is extremely disturbing. Uh, like a lot of people have said, there are many chunks of the movie where you have your uh, eyes averted from the screen. Again, the reason is simple. If I show you the journey that one little girl took, I think I can do a lot more than just throwing, you know, even at the beginning of this trailer, it's like 44,000 children are abducted, 3 million sex workers, these are just numbers, all irrelevant. And, and that's how the journey of Lakshmi started. Now, with Lakshmi, my intention, both as a producer and director, is absolutely clear. 
irrespective of what happens at the box office, I want this film to travel. So what I've done specifically for this film is way before the release, we started showing the film around college campuses. And it has been one of the most gratifying things that I've done in my life because the responses that we got, the kind of spread of the awareness through social media, and the reason that I attacked the colleges was very simple. Uh, you guys are literally the last stage before total cynicism sets in. You are still not jaded to reject every good idea. At least you will consider the idea and if by chance you end up liking it, champion it. And, and that's why I started taking it to uh, college campuses. In addition, we started talking to NGOs to try and screen this. And initially I was a little hesitant because I felt that girls who had been through this would not want to see their own horror depicted on the screen. So I was a little hesitant. But the response that I've gotten from a lot of the NGOs is that this will actually inspire many more Lakshmis. So this needs to be shown. So another burst of enthusiasm. And the key thing with this whole process has been that I have never found a more potent tool. I used to just constantly just pass it off as, oh, this is good entertainment, this is good entertainment, but never once realized that when you sit in that dark hall and these images play out, what exactly goes on in your head is something that's never been truly analyzed. And I think that's something you know worth looking at and studying. I want to close with a wonderful little uh, anecdote that happened. Um, recently, we screened the film in Palm Springs, and it was very interesting to see an international audience uh, react to the film. And I, I had many, and I'm using the word carefully, distraught women approach me and you know, uh, say, thank you for putting the spotlight on a difficult topic and blah, blah, blah. But there was one woman who just stood next to me and she couldn't talk. And she just kept sobbing, but she kept saying one thing over and over again. She kept saying, I need to do something. I, I, I need to do something. And for me, that was it. I was like, I think that's what a good film can do. Good is subjective. I'll rephrase it. That's what I think a film can do, which is inspire the need to do something. Thank you.